I've gotten rid of a couple of networks from the previous lab and added a couple of loopbacks back. So the only thing we're dealing with here is the 172.12.1.23.0 network between routers 1, 2, and 3, and a loopback on 2, a loopback on 3. Router 4 is out of the picture entirely. I cleaned all the RIP commands off with no router RIP before I started this one. So let's just go ahead and quickly configure those three routers. Never hurts to reinforce these commands. Done. I got to go back and put the um, put the loop back on too. All right. So actually, just that quickly, we're all set. Got all the network commands, got no auto, got version 2 on all my routers, and I'm just going to check this before I proceed with my lab, and I don't have anything yet. It's kind of unusual. I could do a clear IP route asterisk, um, and then hope got my updates, and I don't, and I still don't. I'm sure you saw exactly what I did wrong there. And if you didn't, you're going to see exactly what I did wrong here in just a second. But this is an easy mistake to make, but it also leads into something that's very important as far as debugs go. Because let's face it, this is a pretty simple config we just put in. It's one of the simpler configs we're ever going to put in. And it's a couple of network commands, no auto, got your version, and that's it. And to try to figure out why I still don't have my routes, I could go out and look at the config and try to spot it. And the one thing I want to warn you against there, and I'm not saying I've never gone out and looked at a config because I have, but the one thing you want to watch out for is that your eyes can kind of play tricks on you, especially with commands that you see in a config often. And especially on your exam, I would watch auto summary and no auto summary in the configs, and I'm not giving you any great inside information there. It's just something to look out for because we're all so used to seeing no auto summary in a rip config that when we just have auto summary your mind's eye tends to put a no in front of it you know you just kind of see it and you're, oh yeah no auto summary so just read that carefully that also goes for the version number because what i did here is just have a little slip of the pinky finger there when i was typing two and i slid over and i hit the one instead so that's exactly why i don't have any routes right now i could also look in show IP route rip, excuse me, show IP route rip, already did that, show IP protocols, and right here in the middle, default version control, we're sending version one, receiving version one, I put version two on the other two routers, so obviously we're going to have a bit of a problem there. But one thing I want to show you here as far as the debug goes, and the one we're going to run here, of course, is debug IP rip. And so far, we've really run that when things were going as expected. And we used it during auto summarization to see the summarized routes. But the thing is, I want you to get used to running debugs. If you're fortunate enough to have a home lab or you have a simulator that runs debugs, be sure to run them when things are running correctly, because it's a wonderful reinforcement of what's going on as far as you know where updates are going, what updates are kept in a packet, that kind of thing. It really reinforces the theory marvelously. And it's the one thing, I won't say the one thing, but it's the biggest thing that I wish someone had told me when I was studying for the CCNA. And I always try to include that kind of thing in my courses. And here I just want to remind you, not just with RIP, but with everything else, never, of course, practice debugs in a production environment, but always run debugs as you learn them if you get the chance and see what's going on when things are running correctly. Because then you have a little reference when things aren't running correctly. It's like, okay, wait a second, we should be seeing X here. Now, I have a feeling that when we run debug IP rip in a moment, it's going to be yelling at us what the problem is. But we already know what it is, but I want you to see what this looks like as far as the debug goes. And I could run a clear IP route asterisk. And you can see that I'm running version 1, sending request, and I'm broadcasting it because it's going out to 255 and all four octets. And hey, we're ignoring some version 2 packets. 
Not a good idea, but that's actually what's going to happen when the interface is configured to accept only version 1 as it is here, and we got version 2 packets coming in. It's not going to say, oh, you know, no problem, I'll just take these version 2 packets. RIP doesn't work that way, especially when you use version 1 or version 2 like we did here. So what we need to do is fix it. And I'll do no version 1. Version 2 will overwrite it. I'm just kind of retentive that way. I like to take an old command off, put no in front of it. So now, let's see if that has had the desired effect yet. We've got one of our subnets. We'll see the other one here pretty shortly. And the elevator never comes faster when you hit the button. <laughs> I should have just done a clear. Let's go ahead and do a show IP router up here. There we go. Just six seconds. So that's all there is to it. But again, the debug IP rip, simple debug. You're not getting a ton of information. You're seeing the updates. You're seeing who they came from. You're seeing where the hops are. But it's a great way because what I have learned, and if this is you right now, don't feel badly about it at all. People are a little intimidated by debugs. Like, I don't want any debugs. I don't want any debugs unless we have a problem. But what you don't want to do is be that admin who is going to go out and stare at the config until blood droplets form on their forehead because that's what happens sometimes if you haven't learned debugs along the way. Yes, this one was easy to spot in the config, but you're going to run into problems that aren't as easy as just as looking at the config. So I will sum it up, learn this debug, and then learn all the other debugs that you're introduced to in your studies as you go along. Don't let them intimidate you. Like everything else in Cisco, it's a little odd at first. It becomes second nature after a while. So that is it for this, but I think we got a little more rip coming up, and we'll see you that next.